Hello class, this is Mr. Quo, and in this short screencast, I'm going to talk about uh, what the y-intercept of a graph means. Um, so currently I'm on slide 12 of 15 on the Desmos activity, and it's asking you what is the y-intercept of the model you built. just want to remind the class that the y-intercept of a graph is where the line crosses the y-axis. So the y-axis is the vertical axis and it usually deals with the price or the cost. The x-axis here is the number of pieces. And remember that the y variable is the dependent variable. The x-axis is the independent variable. And you could even say that the price that you pay for a Lego piece or a box of Legos depends on the number of pieces that are in the box. Generally, that is the correct statement to say. Um, so in this case, uh, the y-intercept seems like it's at the origin, which is 0, 0. And what that means is for 0 pieces of Legos, you pay $0. Um, there are times where the y-intercept may be positive and it may be shifted above the origin and uh, go ahead and pause to think of a scenario where the y-intercept might be above zero. Some examples of y-intercepts that are above zero are uh, there is a fee that you have to pay in order to buy uh, this item, for example, maybe uh, to, to go into some uh, store just like Costco, you have to pay a fee just to enter the store and then you can start purchasing things. Um, another example might, some people might say is shipping, is shipping a y-intercept, um, but there is, is shipping a, an initial fee. There's always that debate about should shipping be an initial fee because um, there's the controversy of if I buy zero items, do I even need to pay for shipping? So that's something we could talk about and have a discussion about in class. But um, hopefully this screencast reminded you of what the y-intercept of a graph is and how that affects a graph is starts and how it ends. And uh, yeah, thank you for listening.